there we go. I'm, I'm ahead of the game today, so that's good. All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Today is another day in our little uh, adventure together um, on, you know, around the oils in 30 days. And I've been having a lot of fun presenting it. I'm so grateful that every time I show up, there's somebody, there's a, you know, quite a few of you here, you know, to sit with me and share your space and your time with me. Um, it means so much um, to me that you are doing this. So, um, you know, thank you so very much. Um, and um, I am, you know, very, very grateful to have you here. So um, today, um, is, we're going to try a little bit of a fun topic, all right? So, um, hmm. let me ask you guys, when you are um, describing people, you know, when you want to describe somebody uh, to someone and say, you know, because you want to point them out, right? Say, hey, go look for that person who is... Like, what are some of the distinguishing characteristics that you would use to, like, identify someone? Like, you know, you might say, oh, the person wearing the blue dress, right? Or what are some other things that you might use, like, straight up? Like, um, how would you describe people? I know it's really late at night, but bear with me. Can we throw some ideas out there? Like, how would you, like, you know, if you wanted, like, sh you know, point somebody out how do you describe them like what features like physical features do you would you tall hair color shirt short yep there we go height what else you know the tall person but then there are a lot of tall people right um studies have shown that when we are using description to to um to identify people one of the first things that we describe people with by is their hair it's like person with the long blonde hair, the person with the blue hair. It's me. <laughs> um, you know, somebody with, the, you know, like the, the girl with the dark hair, the, the bald guy wearing the parrot shirt, <laughs> right? So, so we use, um, you know, so we, you know, we, we describe people with, with hair. And so hair in a lot of, across many, many cultures have been, has been um, like the mark of beauty. It's a beauty mark. You know, like many cultures like that have long hair, ancient cultures, you know, like long hair, the way, um, you know, the woman does her hair. I mean, hair has been such a defining role in, in how we see ourselves, how we carry ourselves, our fashion sense, uh, our identity, um, you know, like punks and people who are grunge or people who are you know like want to like you know be professional when you when you want to look professional outside of the clothes the next thing that you do is you you know you do your hair right so hair is a very very big part of um you know the human um expression and um you know sometimes you know we say oh you know i just want my hair to be easy i want it to be manageable i just want to be able to like take care of it and go and so hair is a really really big part of it and you can bet your bottom dollar no matter where you fall on the spectrum of um, of how much you do with your hair, you're doing something with your hair. And it is a descriptive for you. So I was thinking that today we would talk a little bit about essential oils and hair, and we're gonna connect it with a broader concept as we move along, right? So um, there are many, many essential oils that are really good for hair. and. As far as I see, a lot of times when, uh, you know, people talk about essential oils that are good for hair, they just list the oils out. Like, this oil is good for hair. And they just, boom, it's just a general statement. And most people are asking about questions for hair growth. So, but there is, there are some nuances. And, you know, we have a great product in doTERRA with um, some really very, like, neutral pH shampoo and conditioner and the thing is we can actually enhance our shampoo and our conditioner and our hair serums or you know our hair perfumes with essential oils um depending on what we're trying to have our hair do and so i wanted to break that down and i wanted to kind of like tie in some interesting concepts for you so hopefully like i said this um works well for us so let's explore this notion all right, <clears throat> so does everybody see this like orange thing here? 
So the scalp is absorbent. It's a great place to apply oils. And it is a place that I notice that a lot of people don't really think about when they go, hey, where do I put my oils on today? We look bottom of the feet, we look back of the neck, we will put oils everywhere, but then we forget about our scalp, <clears throat> which is unfortunate because your scalp is very, very absorbent. Now, here's an interesting thing that I want to use, you know, I want to talk about um, in relation to this. A lot of people talk about applying oils on the bottom of the feet. And the, you know, the, there's a notion that you apply oils on the bottom of your feet because your pores are really big on the bottom of your feet. Here's a truth, okay? The pores have nothing to do with absorption of anything. It is an exit point, not an entry point. Um, and you actually, the oils are actually absorbed through the epidermis of your skin, nothing to do with the pores. So if your pores were actually like taking in things and kind of getting it into your bloodstream and all of that, then, you know, when we go to the pool, you'll like maybe like get, you know, drown or something just from your skin. I mean, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know, you get my concept. It's not, you don't absorb, things don't come in to, through your pores, they go out. Okay. So, but your scalp is very absorbent and it is a great place for you to apply oils. And if you think about it, when you have a head injury, you know, like if you get a cut on your forehead or anywhere in your scalp, and I've had that happen to me, it bleeds profusely. And you think, how? There's like, it's just like, it seems like it's just skin and bone, right? Literally skin and bone, but you bleed and bleed and bleed when you have a cut. And that's because there's so much blood right on your scalp. There's so many veins, capillaries, vessels all over your scalp, which makes it a really, really great combination with your scalp being really absorbent and there being a lot of blood there, which means that applying oils on your scalp is not just going to enhance your hair, it is also going to take it very quickly to the rest of your body because the highways are there, lots and lots of highways. It's like toll, there's a lot of toll, <laughs> like toll free, <laughs> like get, uh, you know, get the oils through your body toll free from the top down. You know, so you have the bottom of the feet, I'm telling you, heard it from me, scalp is very absorbent, it's a wonderful place for you to add your oils and think about it. Just imagine putting oils in your hair, in your, in your, in your scalp, and massaging it in. Like how much self-love is there, right? What a great way to start or end your day. What a great way to love on your children, you know, or, uh, you know, your bald husband. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a really good place. But just be beware that, um, you know, if you don't have a lot of hair and if you have babies, for example, that you want to make sure that you're like mindful of, you know, phototoxic oils. So what do you guys think? Are you going to put oils on your scalp? Like at least consider it? Yes? Yes? Okay. So let's talk about what oils can be useful what purpose, all right? So I have my list here because I've got a lot of slides today and I want to make sure that I go through all of them. So let's do, I think it's this one. All right, let me find it. Um, oh, this is going to be hard. I've got a lot of them pulled up. Hold on, sorry. <clears throat> um, all right, so stimulating oils, right? Here we go. Stop sure. Let me start this again. Let me try this out again. There we go. This one. Okay. Guys, see stimulating hair oils? Okay, so ginger. We just talked about ginger, right? Rosemary. Everybody knows that, I hope. Rosemary is really good for memory and it's also good for uh, hair growth. Black pepper, very, very good, stimulating uh, for your hair. Lemongrass, eucalyptus, thyme, oregano, basil, peppermint, spearmint. I know immediately you're going to be like, I'm going to smell like, um, you know, like an herb garden. But here's the wonderful thing, like oils like basil, thyme, um, I'm just pulling two out there, and even lemongrass. When you put it 
in your scalp or when you put it into blends and apply it on your skin and your hair, it has actually a soapy smell to it. That herbaceous aspect of it is actually used in a lot of cosmetics and a lot of soaps to kind of give it that, that's what gives it that soapy, clean smell. I love how thyme oil smells in my hair. It has like this, um, it's just amazing. It's so different from the bottle when it, as opposed to it going in your hair. And think about it, when you're putting essential oils in your hair and your scalp, you're saying, you know, it's stimulating to your hair follicles and, you know, and it's also getting into all that blood, you know, in your head, getting into your brain, getting, you know, kind of coming down your face and all over your body, you know, you're boosting your immunity, improving your memory, and, you know, black pepper is extremely stimulating. It's got a lot of great benefits, which we're going to talk about in another segment. And that eucalyptus, might, let me tell you, your head, like when you are under stress, there are certain hot spots that you give up heat. And one is your clavicle, the other one is your, you know, the top of your head, which is one of the reasons why, you know, you're told that, you know, you should always wear a hat when it's cold because you want to preserve that heat, right? So you're like, you've got a lot of heat coming out, which makes this a really wonderful and beautiful way for you to use your body as a diffuser. So, um, you know, these are all amazing oils. Play around them. Be not afraid of how they smell in the bottle because you know what? Whatever it is you put in your hair, um, you're only one shampoo or one shower away from smelling different, right? <laughs> Don't, it's okay and and you know and play around with it all right so um you know stimulating those are that's the stimulating um the list of stimulating oils now there are also um other oils like plant-based oils that you can use for carrier oil um, if you want to use it as a hair treatment. And I don't want to get too deep into that because it's an essential oil class. I want you to know that you can do a little bit of research on that. And maybe, who knows, if you guys are interested and indicate that you're interested, maybe we can come back um, at a different time and like discuss some of the oils that would be good for that. But jojoba oil, for example, is really good if you want to add uh, that to your essential oils for like stimulating because it has stimulating factors too. So now let's take a look at the next oil, the next one I want to talk about, and that's revitalizing. All right, so let's see if I can find this guy. Um, there we go. I think this is it. <clears throat> Got a lot of things open here, so bear with me. There we go. Let's try this again. Revitalizing hair oils. I have to find it. Okay, what you know what? Let's just jump to dry. Is that what you guys are seeing? Dry. Hair oils, is that what you're seeing? Okay, so dry hair oils, lavender, frankincense, carrot seed, rosemary, again, you're gonna notice a lot of overlaps, sandalwood, geranium. So carrot seed, I bring that up, even though it's not an essential oil that's provided by doTERRA, but can anybody tell me what blend has carrot seed oil in it? Do you guys know? Everybody's busy copying. You know you're all gonna get these slides, right? I mean, it used to be in in um, hair product, but I don't think it is anymore. Um, it is in Clary Calm carrot seed oil, and and it's really interesting uh, that they added Clary carrot seed because carrot seed oil is also a really powerful natural SPF. So you know you've got lavender, frankincense, carrot seed oil, uh, rosemary, sandalwood, geranium um, that are very good for dry hair because they actually like balance out that that uh, that sebum sebum you know like the oil the oil production aspect um, and you know rosemary is just an all around um, stabilizer for you know like scalp care um, but all of these oils are just really good for a good dry hair oils and as you and it makes really like for me I see it so clearly it's again that white square in the Rubik cube because your hair and a good stylist a good hairstylist will tell you like they'll be able to tell you what is going on in your life like even like the, the, the observant you know they can tell when your hair changes 
and they're like, oh, there's something going on with you hormonally. And you know, like with Ayurvedic medicine and Chinese medicine, ancient, they look at the hair, they will like they actually test your hair and like feel your hair. Doctors these days don't these days don't do that because your hair actually also gives you a, you know a sign. And if you look, if you have certain kinds of hair, a certain kind of hair where the hair needs certain support, and you look at the oils that are presented, and then if you were to like backtrack and cross-reference against how these oils might um, you know, like cross over into like physical ailments or emotional aspects of your life, you might find overlaps. It's really cool. Um, so let's stop share there. Um, let me just, sorry, I'm just trying because I've got a, quite a few segments to go through and I just want to make sure that I don't miss anything. So let's just go in no particular order anymore. Uh, and try this guy over here and I can find it mm. what are you guys seeing can you tell me normal hair normal hair thank you Tony <clears throat> there we go normal hair so normal hair, lavender shows up again, cedarwood, lemon, orange, geranium, eucalyptus, carrot seed, rosemary, sandalwood. Now, do any of these oils surprise you as far as, you know, hair care goes? Is anything jumping out at you and going, wow, I've never heard that before. Like, I mean, eucalyptus, right? You think of it as a respiratory oil, but here it is showing up as a very powerful um, you know, hair oil. And if you look at what eucalyptus does, I mean, it's a vasodilator. Vasodilation is really good for your scalp care and for hair growth, for strengthening your follicles. Um, you know, sandalwood, again, is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an oil that triggers um, strengthening and regeneration of that matrix in your skin and anything to do with that. So it's like holding, you know, it's like almost like it tightens that the follicles, so it prevents like hair loss. It keeps your hair, you know, if you have normal hair, it's like keeping, maintaining that homeostasis. Um, you know, we've got cedar wood that shows up, lavender again, geranium. It's like a lot of overlapping oils. And there you see carrot seed again. So um, again, you know, like you're like, well, if my hair is normal, then, you know, like all these oils are coming up, then what is it addressing? You know, but I'll tell you, most people like don't really have normal hair. <laughs> right? It's like really rare. It's just, I think they, they just have this as a category for like the really young, <laughs> you know, like every, I don't know why this category even exists. It doesn't make sense to me, but there it is. Um, and I just, you know, figured, you know, that's the kind of categories that we have for hair. So let's go with it. Um, so let's look at um, another one <clears throat> that we can do. And maybe let's do this one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there it is. Okay. Are you guys seeing psoriasis oils? Um, Cause you know, like some people have psoriasis um, in their scalp and here you go, melaleuca, geranium, clary sage, bergamot, juniper berry, spikenard, arbovita, German chamomile, Roman chamomile, lavender, cardamom, fennel, thyme. Do you notice a pattern here in the oils that are coming up for psoriasis oils? Anybody notice a pattern? And by the way, put German chamomile in there because you know, we have some blends that have German chamomile. Do you know what they are? Anybody? What are some of the blends that have German chamomile in it? Uh, balance. Mm -hmm. One more. Also blue. Digestin? No, not digestin. Um, it's deep blue. Deep blue has German chamomile in it. So if do you guys notice a pattern? Like if you look at psoriasis oils, you notice like if just what are like broad range, what is jumping out at you that 
you know, if you like look at these oils and you didn't see psoriasis oils, you look at these oils if they, and somebody were to say, these oils are good for what? And your answer cannot be psoriasis. Stress, digestion. Digestion, stress, yes. Hormones. What else? Hormones, yes. You know, so those three things. And those three things cause, you know, are the root causes of psoriasis. And so if you use it, you know, even like if you use it topically, great. But if you, you know, and if you use it digestively, that's the root. And so it's like the top and the bottom, you know, it's like, you know, like the, the symptom and the root is showing you very clearly, right? And I bet you anything for people who suffer from psoriasis, if they were to look at other things that they're going through, they'll find overlaps with these oils. And if they look at some of the emotional aspect and they just start working on those emotional aspects with this list, that, that psoriasis is actually going to ease. So a lot of our ailments are a sign of our lack of kindness to ourselves. It really is. It's a lack of our kindness to ourselves. It's, it, that expresses itself in, you know, and, and manifests in a physical form. Of course, you know, like there are viruses and all of that, but even then our immunity, our, you know, the strength and the versatility of our immunity is affected by stress and toxins, right? So anyway, uh, don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but are you guys picking up so far what I'm laying down? Um, yes? Okay. Um, oh, we've got a few more people here. Let me just say hi to them real quick. Let's bring them in. Be like a full house. The more people, the merrier. I like to see all the thumbs up. All right, let's look at another one. Did I just do, I did psoriasis, normal. All right, let's try this guy over here. And we're done with you. I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's just a lot more slides that I can like logically handle. Um, okay. Soothing hair oils. Is that what you guys see? Yep. Okay. Soothing hair oils. Um, clary sage, marjoram, Roman chamomile, lavender, whole wood, bergamot, pedigree, vetiver, frankincense, geranium, rose, neroli, jasmine, cedarwood, sandalwood. Uh, if you guys are paying attention to day one, a lot of these oils show up for stress. And when we say we need soothing hair oils, what's happening is it's like if we have like, you know, like our um, follicles are, you know, damaged. And, you know, if we have, um, you know, um, irritation, you know, like a lot of irritation. Um, and I'm not talking smoothing. I'm talking soothing. I don't know if you guys ever experienced this. But people with autoimmune issues will tell you that, yes, they feel it. It's like where their scalp actually hurts. And like if they, you know, like any little tiny tug in their hair hurts. And if they put, you know, like press their fingertips against their scalp, it's tender. Anybody with autoimmune issues feel that way? Yeah, I see a few hands. Yep. And that's what this is about, like this, that soothing. And that usually also manifests itself in like hair that needs a bit of soothing, you know, where it might be like, you know, damaged, fragile, a little, a little bit of breakage, not as thick and full. And um, the soothing hair oils, if you look at the oils themselves, like pedigree, for example, huge for anxiety and frazzled nerves. Hoewood is, you know, was an oil, is an oil in um, balance. Roman chamomile is, you know, for that rest and relax, the parasympathetic nervous system. There you see it with neroli, cedarwood, um, sandalwood, rose for hormonal issues and the mood swings, you know, like, you know, like that, the extreme swings. Marjoram 
for pain. Marjoram is good for hair, but then it's also good for that pain. Bergamot for, you know, like relaxation because a lot of people can have actual scalp tension. Where, you know, have you ever had, like when you, it's like somebody massages your head? Why, you know, when we, you know, we love having somebody like shampoo our hair, right? Giving us that like rub on our, you know, on our scalp because we hold a lot of tension in our scalp like the scalp muscles and it's not just a cranial sacral massage technique but in the actual um you know scalp itself because there's like you know like some connective tissue and all of that and it, there's scalp tension and these oils actually help with that while it's helping soothe you know it's like soothing hair oils try combinations of these oils and you know give your help give yourself a really good head massage and you're actually going to uh, improve your hair, you know, like, like the quality, look and feel of your hair and um, ease that tension that we hold and we forget about that's in our scalp. So um, I don't know how you feel about this, but to me, this is like super cool stuff. Like, you know, it's like fun, right? Something different. Um, and then um, let's see, I think, let's see, I did. Um, um let's see i've got just a couple more left i think let's try this guy here where are you mm. Mm. help me out here guys what are you seeing Oily here. thank you oily here okay so here we go again rosemary lavender pedigree Lime, thyme, grapefruit, cypress, basil, lemon, geranium, eucalyptus, juniper berry, bergamot, and cedarwood. Juniper berry, uh, oh, spelt it wrong. There's an N there. But juniper berry is really good for kidney function, you know, dark circles under your eyes. And, you know, what happens is like, okay, so your kidney actually like processes, you know, like liquid, right? Urination fluid. But you know that it actually, oh, it, it, urination is a form of, your, of toxin removal, especially fat cells, especially fat cells. So this is not something that's actually explained to you or the dots are not really connected, but juniper berry is very, very powerful for kidney function, but it's also powerful for that oil, you know, like the, um, for fat and also for the reduction of oil. Remember what I told you? Your pores are an exit point. And so your hair follicles, um, you know, people who have like extremely oily hair, it's actually tied in to respiratory issues, kidney issues, um, you know, bladder issues. Um, and you see that show up like in cypress, thyme, grapefruit, um, eucalyptus, juniper berry, cedar wood, which is respiratory and, um, you know, good for kidney. Um, rosemary, lime, I mean, boom, boom, boom. Do you guys see it? I mean, I see it. Do you see it? I need you to see it. Like I, yes. Okay, Martina, good. Thank you. Sandy? Yes? All right. So, so that's, um, you know, that's, you see, you, you see the connection, you know, like the, the way it ties in. So you taking care of your hair and giving yourself, you know, putting some oils in your hair, it's actually going to be so beautiful and such a wonderful, powerful way for you to support your body systems as well. All right. Let's see. Almost done, guys. Bear with me. Almost done. Just muscle through it. All right. Um, I think this one is probably the one that most people are most interested in, and hair loss oils. So lemon, thyme, cedarwood, rosemary, lavender, ylang ylang, ginger, spikenard, black pepper, again, cypress, clary sage, german chamomile, sandalwood, clove, geranium. And a lot of times hair loss comes from stress. It comes from hormonal issues. You know, it comes from um, liver, like an overworked liver. Um, it comes sometimes, you know, believe it or not, actually, there's a lot of ties with uh, like hair loss and like your, and candida as well. Um, so, and of course it's DNA, like, you know, like DNA issues, there's that, like can't fight that. But again, it talks about like the concept 
that your body always fall, follows the line of least resistance. And the line of least resistance means that when you don't have enough to give every aspect of your body, the body will have to pick and choose and prioritize where it's going to put its energy to. And the, the, what is lowest on the totem pole will always be the thing that is least needed for your survival. And so things like hair, you know, skin, um, you know, even energy levels are low on the totem pole next to things like cardiovascular function, digestive function, respiratory function. Those are primal and needed for survival. And so when your body is depleted and your body is under stress and is full of, you know, and has high toxin levels outside of hereditary and, you know, part of your DNA, um, like hair loss is a sign of extreme stress and toxins. Think about it. When your hormones change that, and you're under stress, that's when you start losing hair, right? I mean, you know, like hair starts dropping out. And when you look at inflammatory, you know, when you have in, a lot of inflammation going, in your going on in your body, the body needs to pick where it is um, going to spend its energy. Um, it's going to like let go. It's like hair loss, let go of it, let it go, right? So, so all of these oils are very, very important in stress and toxins. Like just put a marker next to each one of that. Clove shows up for hair loss, guys. It is the most powerful antioxidant on the planet. There it is. And I, I get a lot of, like, I'm very sensitive to barometric pressure. And so I like to put clove oil in my hair. And I can almost feel where my favorite spots are because the hair is, like, better there, <laughs> like, with clove oil. Like, it's, like, thicker. I've got, like, thick, thicker patches. So, because, you know, because of that barabenic pressure. So I was always like using clove oil. Um, ylang ylang is hormonal. You know, we talked about ginger in like last two days. Um, spikenard. Oh my gosh, so powerful for the parasympathetic nervous system. Right? We talked about that. And black pepper keeps showing up for hair. And we thought that black pepper was only good for what? Like addictions. Right? And, you know, for warming oils. But black pepper... At almost every single slide showed up with black pepper. Black pepper is a very, very powerful, because it's like heat. It brings like that circulation and heat, you know, into your scalp in the right way. And there's a lot of other things that it does too. Rosemary keeps showing up pretty much every single slide. Who would have thought? Time? Time is one of those unsung heroes. People are like, we don't really use thyme oil as much as we should, but it is so powerful. I'm going to help you guys fall in love with thyme oil as we progress over the next 30 days. But try it. If you have thyme oil tomorrow, try it in your hair with a few other oils, not just thyme oil, but you know, maybe with a little bit of bergamot um, or pick something, you know, like combo, like a, like a one, two, three combo and let thyme oil be one of the notes in that combo. And you know, it smells amazing. As the day progresses, you're going to smell it and it's, it just smells better and better. So, um, you know, I, 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 you know, like, thank you for like hanging out with me and letting me yammer on about, you know, this topic because, um, you know, I really appreciate your, your patience with that. And um, I want to, um, I, I know I'm way over my time today, uh, but can we muscle through just one more thing? Are you guys okay to do just one more thing with me? Okay, because I really, really want to talk to you about Clary Sage. Did you notice that Clary Sage came out a few times, right? And Clary Sage is, um, is known for, what do we use Clary Sage for? Like the number one thing we use Clary Sage for? Hormones, right? Women's hormones. Well, let me tell you this. That is like, what it's well known for, but that's not what Clary Sage is like. What that's not the strength of Clary Sage. Let me tell you, Clary Sage is not just a lady's oil. It is a powerful human oil. It's really, really good for men too. It's very powerful for libido, input, input, uh, in, um, impotency, um, fertility. It strengthens your gums. It 
it is like one of the most powerful oils to strengthen gums. So if you feel that your gums are weakening, um, it is very, very good for that. It is a really good for hair strength and hair growth. Um, it is, it, it does the urinary tract and the colon. And there are very few oils that do the urinary tract and the colon. It's like two completely system, different systems, but it does both. And here's a very powerful thing for me. It's like one of my favorite topics. And it's not because I'm an addict, but because I work with a lot of addicts. That's like my, you know, my, my service. Um, it is very powerful in curbing addictions of all kinds, especially drugs. And we never hear anyone talk about clary sage. You know, everybody's like basil, black pepper, copaiba. But clary sage, so subtle, so powerful. And next to clove, clary sage is also one of the most powerful antioxidants. It's good for all skin types. It's good for hair and skin. So remember that. So don't put it where you don't want hair. Are you guys connecting that? <laughs> <laughs> it's good for hair and skin <laughs> like, like don't put it where you don't want hair to grow where well, hair might grow and you don't want it to grow there don't put it there okay um and it it supports the parasympathetic nervous system clary sage is known as drops of euphoria in, in, in the ancient mythology of clary sage is called the oil of euphoria Okay, so I want to tell you um, a little bit about, you know, I like, I, I learn about oils through the mythology. People ask me, like, what books about essential oils can you direct me to? And where do you know your knowledge? It's like I learn it through stories, through mythology, through ancient history. I love, I love ancient history. And so I learn about the plants by learning about, you know, ancient history and phytochemistry from a historical perspective. So, um, and you know, I told you guys, right, I accidentally learned Latin as a child. Um, I think I told, told you guys at some point. Um, it was accidental because I didn't know that that was like not, I don't know, I just like picked up books that had Latin in it. And so the word clary actually means um, clear. It's just like what it sounds, it's clear. Do you know that clary sage? Clear, ancient. It was used for all things to do with the eyes. It is very, very strengthening and powerful for the optic nerve. It is very, very good for the eyes. That's why it's called clary sage. Before it was known for hormones, it was known for the eyes. Um, so uh, any kind of eye, eye complaint, you know, so um, soreness in the eye, tired eyes. Um, so it makes for like a really nice, uh, you know, if you want to kind of put like, you know, like toner or rose water with clary sage and you know, cotton pad, your eyes, or to add it to Immortel and put it around your eyes to improve your, you know, your, your vision along as well as, well as fennel. Fennel is also really good for vision. Um, and so it was actually, clary sage was actually one of the most like um, revered, revered um, ingredients that people added you know, to different kinds of salves as well uh, during the Roman Empire. Um, clary sage was known also that people used clary sage to, for, like, for longevity. Um, so um, it is um, very, very powerful that way. Um, it is very powerful in restoring qi energy and it strengthens qi energy um, so that it has been depleted. And um, it, it does... You know how we talked about full spectrum oils? So um, clary sage rests and circulates the chi. Rest and circulate. Two opposing things, but this is another example of the concept that we first started with on this journey, which is full spectrum oils, right? Where we talked about cypress. So it's really good for tired, aching, heavy legs. So clary sage we, is so underused. Um, it can be powerful for headaches and migraines. Um, and, and, you know, of course, like some of the triggers might be hormonal, but it can also be because of light sensitivity. And clary sage will work for that too. Um, it is uh, really, 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 really good for anything to do with digestive as well. Um, and because it clears the chi energy in the stomach. So if you are cauldron, fillers um you are you know follow my like cauldron 
antics and you put essential oils in your belly button. Um, clary sage is really powerful for you to use at night in your belly button. You will fall asleep in like five, four, three, you know, and um, it is, and you wouldn't think of it. It's not ever mentioned, but it is very powerful for any kind of stress related digestive issues. So, um, you know, when you have like your, your you know, your bowels uh, feel a little crabby, you know, so try and figure out what I'm trying to say there. Another word for crabby is anybody? Oh, hopefully you don't have a hairy belly button. <laughs> so, yes. um, another word for crabby is? It starts with an I. Indigestion. Um, yeah, but think of an emotion. Another word for crabby? It starts with an I. Irritation. Oh, irritable. Yeah. Oh, yeah, irritable, right? So, you know, so it's really, really good for that. Like, so I really need you guys to know that and tell people. Um, and so if you mix it with copaiba, it works really, really well. And from a gynecological standpoint, it is, um, um, it has the same importance as Cyprus. And, you know, and we know that, you know, we know that, you know, that's what we associate clary sage with, with, with like female hormones. But from a gynecological pers perspective, it's as powerful as um, Cyprus and uh, reducing, you know, your, your um, desire to ride a broom at a specific time during the month. Um, and what you don't know too is that clary sage is so good for your respiratory system. Again, it's a full spectrum oil when it comes to the respiratory system because it helps not just with shallow breathing, but um, aggravated breathing, Tony. So not just shallow breathing, but aggravated breathing. Um, and it also strengthens and stimulates the lung chi because the lung chi is associated with the digestive, the stomach chi in Chinese medicine. Um, clary sage helps you to open up your chest, like a deep breath. So try adding a little bit of clary sage with breathe. Just try it, guys. Just do me a favor. Just try a little bit of clary sage with breathe and inhale and just feel that. It's like an amazing, like you feel like this energy ball just opening up for you um, and it is both stimulating stimulating and relaxing but it finds that middle it's like that it's called that um, you know like where you're chill but you're happy and energized you know that feeling it's like that yes you're gonna do that all right Sylvia show and tell tell me what you think um, and and so it's really good for that. It's strengthening and relaxing at the same time. Um, it's calming to the mind and it eases tension. Um, it um, has a mental and emotional uplift. So it, you know, it handles two of that, you know, like that mental and emotional. So if you're having an emotional day that's, that's making you feel mentally tired, Clary Sage is going to be awesome for that. Sylvia, did you try it yet? All right, unmute yourself. Yeah. Tell me what you thought. It's awesome. I never made this mix before, and thank you. <laughs> it feels like flowers. <laughs> yes. So you're taking that herbaceous sharpness of breathe and softening it a little bit, right? So um, that's. Very cool. Um, everybody still here? Where did everybody go? Did I, was I the only one that fr froze out? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, but Sylvia, everybody heard Sylvia, right? Did everybody hear Sylvia? Awesome. So, you know, it kind of gives you that floral. It's kind of like, softens that sharpness of the breeze right awesome so try it guys super fun would have thought um and um it helps enliven the senses and um dispels illusions and um it also when you mix it with pedigree, it helps reduce that nervous tension one of my favorite blends uh recently and i like to like do different things in my cauldron right is is um Clary Sage and 
spikenard. And spikenard, like some people don't like the way spikenard smells and clary sage has a way of softening it. So it's really cool. Now, if you're looking for, you know, your ins, you know, like re rediscovering your instinct and finding your life's true purpose. And if you're unable to see clearly the here and now and are distracted, um, clary sage will help clear that. Remember, I told you, it's like, you know, like the um, emotions book says that clary sage is something else. It doesn't call it the oil of euphoria, but the Romans and people who, be, you know, started when they first began using this clary sage, they called it the oil of euphoria. So bring a bit of euphoria in your life, guys, and you can do it by taking care of your hair. So remember, your scalp is absorbent. Apply oils on it. And um, it's a really great place for you to start, you know, putting some oils on. So I want to thank you all so very much for joining me. And I'm going to end the Facebook Live. If any of you want to stay on the panel and ask me any questions or if you have any comments, uh, I'm happy to stay on for like another 10 minutes. And then, um, you know, we'll call it a night. I know it's a late night. And thank you so much for those of you who are joining me and sharing your time and your space and giving up a little bit of your sleep for me. It really means a lot to me, and um, I hope you're learning uh, with me and find this to be useful because I get to share a piece of myself with you, and that means a lot to me. So um, thank you all so very much. I'm going to end the Facebook Live. Those of you who want to stay on, please do. Okay, guys, so what do you think? Did you, did you like, was that fun? Like, learning about oils can be fun. There was some comments here. I think somebody asked me uh, about, I, I just saw it, like, I'm like, whiz by, um, about the, hmm, where did it go now? Oh, okay, heavy legs. Would you mix it with cypress and rub on legs? Sure. Uh, put a little bit of um, carrier oil. You can also mix it with, um, aroma touch and you know it really helps with that or just even the bottom of your feet um, would be great um, so um, how how what did you guys think of this information like coming at it from like beauty and you know, using essential oils from a beauty standpoint um, Yes. I am getting ready to do a class Saturday on essential oils and hair, and this is perfect timing. Um, I do have a question because rosemary kept coming up, and how does that affect with somebody that may have um, high blood pressure um, by applying it to the head? Because it does say to use with caution. What type of caution do we need to use? See, that, you know, I, that's difficult for me to answer. That's really okay. voice. You know, you, you let them know that there is that problem, right? And that's a choice. But okay. What I have found in the five years that I've been doing this, honestly, I mean, anybody who can say otherwise, please correct me. I've never, ever seen anybody who was using rosemary who had their BP go up, especially not if they com used it in conjunction with lemon. And okay. most, almost everybody uses citrus, you know, or, you know, most people do. But, um, you know, especially if it's in conjunction with, with citrus, or if you were to use, like, go and look at what might be some of the other oils that might stabilize that. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. I've really never seen anybody go, I used rosemary and my BP went up. But that's not the PC answer. So you let them know that rosemary will, you know, is, an op, you know, is, is a problem, a potential problem, and that's their choice. But did you see that I showed you guys so many oils? Forget rosemary. You know, right. use sandalwood. Use, right. you know, clary sage, right? You know, like, forget about it. Yeah. Don't forget about it. Don't use it. Like, that would be the best answer. Okay. Like, everything else, okay. forget about it. Don't, don't even say any of that. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And good luck with your class. Well, it's, we're taking one oil... Uh, every third Saturday and we're just exploring one oil and the ladies came up and said, well, I want to know about hair loss. What okay. do I do? And I spray oils in my hair as soon as I get out of the shower. Mm -hmm. I have a little bottle 
bunch of little oils that I put in and I just spray my hair and my uh, hairdresser has told me that she says, oh my gosh, you've got all kinds of little things growing out. And I was like, what do you mean little things? And she says, you've got, and she says, your hair's not damaged. She says, but you've got little hairs. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, now I've got about an inch and a half now of hair, new hair growth. So <clears throat> that's cool. Yeah. I've got a lot of hair here because I'm always mm -hmm. dropping oils on my crown chakra. And yeah. Like I always feel a lot of pressure with that barometric change. So I'm always like, Ch -ch -ch, you know, so like I've got like my, my hairdresser also tells me like I've got more hair happening up here than elsewhere. And she's like, why don't you like evenly more distribute that those essential oils a little bit more evenly. Yeah. Like, getting to it, you know, but yes. Yeah, so good luck with that class. Thank um, you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments or uh, questions, statements? I was really interested in when you said um, those of us with fibromyalgia or um, autoimmune illnesses that um, that the, the scalp is very sensitive because I have found and I and no one ever uh, under or you know anyone I've talked to about it has never they just sort of poo poo it but you get you know little sores or little tenderness in in your hair. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I just thought it was interesting that you mentioned it because no one else has ever said anything about it, especially the back of my head too. Right, and and a, a lot of time people with um, fibromyalgia or I mean like you know autoimmune issues, it's like if they have any kind of like neck tension or psoriasis or skin conditions, it usually shows up like right in the base of their neck as well. Mm -hmm. like that's you know like because you know you have like some people have the psoriasis around the ear yeah right but i've noticed that like with certain autoimmune issues it's like on the base of the neck you know and it's usually right on that triangular spot you know where they tell you where there's a lot of neural neuroreceptors mm -hmm. and um if you look at what autoimmune issues is is your body's not communicating right it's like right so it's, it's manifesting right there in that brain body connection. It's just observation. There's like no, nothing that's actually written, but I observe things. Mm -hmm. you know? Like most people who don't like Ylang Ylang are usually around a lot of kids. Well, I, but I found that, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to, um, if I feel like I'm getting sick, a lot of times it's, I feel it in my head first. Right. And it's not head, it's scalp. It's a scalp, right? Yeah. I feel it on my scalp first, and and, and, and or my ears, uh huh, I, uh, on the yeah. my earlobes, and, and there's like neurological, you know, pathways, you know, like there to uh, reflexology points. But the scalp thing, I mean, just and you know, like, did you guys like? What did you think of that idea? You know, like, you know, like the scalp tension. Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. Like when you like, you know, massage a scalp, do you feel scalp tension? Doesn't it feel good when you get? that scalp massage, right? So, yes, Sylvia? Yes, um, well, I'm originally from Peru, and in Peru, when we are anything stressed or anything, our moms grab a little piece of uh, hair like that and just pull it really quick, and then the stress goes away. Right, right. I mean, because there's so much happening along there. And if you study meridian lines, too, there's like, like like a cobweb of meridian lines that like just like center around you know in the head before it becomes more like broader in you know the rest of the body so um there's a lot going on just on the skull you know so like you got the brain chemistry to think about then you got like the skull mojo you know to deal with um and thank you for the tip on the breath and clary sage is awesome i am um, like feeling so energized and uplifted. Yes, uh, it's great. And then put it in your belly button tonight and sleep like a queen yes. without pee in the bed. <laughs> princess in the sea. That's what I meant, not like pee. I'm awkward. I'm sorry. Um, I cannot pronounce your name, but Dwin, you have your hand raised, so just speak. Um, oh, that's yeah. my... I was curious. 
hear me. I was curious about that you didn't bring up blue tansy at all. Um, for hair? Well, because it's so good for the skin. It is. Um, it is very good for the skin. Um, it hasn't shown up necessarily for anything to do with hair, though. I think that it would be, it wouldn't hurt. You would have like maybe a blue sculpt for a while if you don't dilute it, right? Um, but I think that that's a very valid statement <laughs> and a very valid comment. And I bet you anything that it would be really good for like that psoriasis list too. Um, because, that's what I, yeah. The yeah. Of severe skin, I use it, I may, I have a, for some reason I keep getting people with severe skin issues. I mean, like really severe, mm -hmm. and uh, I I hate the smell of it. And that's that's the oil I do not love the smell of it. But mm -hmm. boy, is it effective! It is amazing. It is like one of the most powerful antihistamines, natural antihistamines known. Yeah, it's very powerful. It really is. But I have to blend it with other things because I I don't really care for the smell. But the power of the oil is really amazing. It really is. And you know, if you just Google like blue tansy lotion blue tansy face cream right a little tub of blue tansy cream with you know god knows what kind of blue tansy and how much can run anywhere from 60 dollars to 280 dollars yeah it's expensive but um i don't know it, it may be um it's an, a newer essential oil to people and it's not as much you know talk about it but i do like it for in uh, severe skin issues, I really do like it. I use blue tansy a lot and I do recommend it a lot, but I was thinking, you know, I always kind of like have my mind like centered towards like that histamine response. So, you know, I will definitely add that in because that's awesome. And this is a great example of how we're stronger together. Yeah, I was just curious. So thank you. And and a lot of these notes that I'm um, I'm putting out, I'm like actually regurgitating from like, you know, a couple of years ago. So some of it may not have like True. the more, you know, um, up yeah, up to date oils. Um, so um, yes, I'm going to add that to the list. Thank you so oh. much. That, oh. That's a great addition. My pleasure. I can't wait to hear about your take on um, the new oils, the green mandarin and pink pepper and star anise. Well, I did um, extensive videos on all three of those. If you want to okay. go yeah, um, they are uh, on my main, on my personal page. So when you go into like the Facebook search, you can go in the videos and find it, or in the Facebook search, put my name in okay. Facebook search, and like pink pepper, and it will pop up. Okay, thank you. you yeah, I'm, oh, I love them. The pink pepper, I can't get enough of. I just, um, I was like, it's so, it's so beautiful. It's like got so many notes in there. Yeah, thank you for all your sharing. I really appreciate it. And I loved your um, your interview with Eddie. Oh, yes. Her and now you're um, bringing in um, the Da Vinci scientific thoughts. That really resonated today when I listened. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Because I, I love the old story, you know, Da Vinci's younger mm -hmm. life. But he has thoughts where I love, I love um, learning about him. Yeah, and you know, it's like, you know, just a notion that science is so vast and science is always right. But we don't understand the full scope of science. And we, right. so we put a limit on it and we make absolute statements. Right. And you can break all those rules. And it was interesting too, because that interview with Eddie, it was like, I didn't really know what he was, wanted me to do. I thought he just wanted me to do like a call with his team. Oh. I, I had no idea it was just going to be him and me. And then I didn't know what we were going to talk about because I asked him like, what are we going to talk about? He goes, Oh, it was, it's going to be a surprise. I'm like, shouldn't I be the one that surprises you? Like what's happening? <laughs> I've been following him for a long time. He actually just likes to pull the best out of what you want to share. That's it. Yeah. He's really, really good. And he's like a really awesome friend. And yeah. The so person. Um, anybody else? Last question. Anyone want to say something or comment about today's content? Are we okay with kind of going on this like kind of non-traditional um, direction that I like meander through? <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention that um, I've been falling in love with Clary Sage and I'm going to be trying it a whole lot more and I can't wait to put some oils on my scalp. 
Yes. But yeah, I'm going to like, I'm starting a revolution, you know, like put oils in your belly button, put oils in your skull. The cauldron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Going back to the cauldron, do you suggest the clary sage with the breathe at night for sleeping? Um, I didn't say clary sage and breathe at night. For oh. I'm just saying like when you use clary, like breathe, like if you need to soften it. Because, you know, like the, the clary sage is so powerful for respiratory that we, like nobody talks about it. You know, that, I just wanted to bring that to mind. But absolutely, you can. You can even put okay. it in the freezer. I have difficulty. And you know how I stumbled upon it, too? It was because I, had dif I have difficulty with breathe in the diffuser. It keep, like, I keep smelling it, you know. And so like, while I'm dreaming, I'm like, mm, breathe. <laughs> you know, it's just like very distracting. I want to just focus on my dream. It's weird that there's a diffuser. And, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. So I started to use different oils to see like how I could soften it. And clearly, really, I loved the way it smelled. And so I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder if, you know, it has a good respiratory support, just as a curiosity aspect. And so when I was digging in the books, I'm like, boom, it came up in the mythology of, of, um, of clearly sage. That it's like, eyes and resp respiratory i'm like what so cool that's awesome well thank you for sharing that you're welcome and um monique you put your hand up um i was wondering what you were cooking at like, oh sorry i just dropped my phone because i'm doing dishes and cooking <laughs> is that what you're doing were you doing dishes i thought you were cooking no, no i was i'm cooking i have that's been Doing and slowly cooking since, since afternoon, and I'm like, couldn't realize the time. And I was like, I didn't mean to be rude, but I have to get it done. <laughs> no, no, you were not being rude. This is you. It, it's um, but you can even do that without wearing pants. I mean, you don't even know I'm wearing pants. <laughs> you cracked me up. I love it. Um, it's actually like a ham, ham. My mother in law made ham dinner on Sunday, and she gives me the bone, and I make the bone ham bone soup bone? with. Yeah, but I put like every vegetable that I have in the fridge in there, so it's like a weird combination of whatever's in Monique's fridge. <laughs> like that's the best. That's the best way. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I just and I'm probably gonna go a little little weird, but it's funny because I jumped on late and I've been accidentally getting into the Facebook lives, and I first I logged in as my upline. I couldn't figure out why my Jessica Andrews was coming across my name, but um, you hit a nerve with the hair stuff. And it's been really. Uh, I've never heard really anyone talk about hair and um, oils the way that you just did. And I think that um, I needed to hear that tonight. So thank you. I felt like you're speaking to me because um, this has been a very sore spot for me for the last year. A lot of other things in my life have been going so great, but I've been mass losing massive amounts of hair this year. And I know that it was stress related, but like still couldn't put my finger on why or how or what or hormones or, but it's, you know, as women, it's a, it's a, it's an insecurity thing. It's a pretty thing. It's a, it's all sort there's so much connected to that. So I feel like you really, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to say that. Um, I keep saying it over and over again. I don't know if you guys like fully grasp like how much it means to me that I'm resonating with you because it a lot, you know, it, it it's like, it validation and I know that at this age and this stage I should need validation but I've spent a lifetime of being told no and to be quiet and that my way is not is too much and too intense you know and so this really is a lot of healing you telling me that is you're healing me and I really thank you for that right back at you <laughs> sorry <laughs> I relate to that, so thank you. <laughs> I mean it a lot. So on that sappy note. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, this is cool. This is real, and this is, it's real. It's happy. And it's, and it's, and it's heart, and it's family. It's, you know, it's all, it's all beautiful. It's euphoria. Right? So It's very good. <laughs> Mix it up with a little bit of ginger, throw some cypress in there, and have a, some wonderful dreams, wonderful day, beautiful hair, right? 
So thank you all so very much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. And it's going to be the same time tomorrow. I'm so sorry. It's going to be another late night. I was, I've been up since 5 a.m. today and I've not stopped. Like this is the last thing I'm doing today. And it has been some, in, in, to a certain extent, it's been like doing triple things. And I look at myself right now and I am amazed that I still am like this. Like I'm like this. And I've been up since five and not just up since five and just going through life, like up since five and like one after another intense. You know, I, I taught two classes, did, one, uh, did a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, did like a whole bunch of business one-on-ones with people, hung out with my kids, like, you know, consoled my dog who was, I don't know, upset about something, cooked, cleaned, you know, like all of it. And it's just only 24 hours, less than. I mean, are you tired hearing about my day? Because I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm like, bring it. But um, I want to thank you all so very much and we have wonderful blessings and you know share those blessings with the people around you i love you all so very much and you know what i know you love me too i can feel it but thank you so much have a good night